Let's go to Madeline. Back to Kansas City. We're going to Kansas City, but on the Missouri side. What's up, Madeline? <laughs> yes. Hey, how are you? <laughs> You're like, don't, don't ever loop me in with Kansas. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> People think the Civil War is going to be between New York and L.A. It's super not. It's going to be Missouri versus Kansas. That's where it's going to start. Oh. 100%. <laughs> so, Thanks for having me. Listen, don't fight Kansas. They're great. I love Kansas. <laughs> All right. So what's up? So um, I'm calling today because um, I was just curious. Navigating dating in 2022, um, how do you balance contentment and singleness while longing for a life partner? I'm an old married guy. I don't know. I know. You tell me. <laughs> so I'm almost 30 years old okay. and I've never dated. What? Hey, let me stop um, you. How come? It's just never presented itself. So, no, no. Why haven't you dated? <laughs> so I honestly have never been asked, but something I've struggled with is Reaching out and trying to find connection, but often being met with um, rejection or ghosting. So it's like trying to initiate that just to even have basic connection and not even with the intent of like, I'm going to marry you, but just trying to, you know, become friends and be connected and have those relationships. But it's, it has just been um, a dead end. and I am just kind of in a rut and mm. kind of lost. So I need some guidance. <laughs> yeah. I think beneath you, you're smiling while you're talking. Cause that's what you do. <laughs> um, uh, I can hear it in you. Yeah. It's, it's like, you got this thing, you got this thing duct tape together. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Yes. So let me get behind the people just ghost me behind the nobody's ever asked me beneath all of that. Somebody told Madeline that Madeline's not worth hanging out with. Madeline's not beautiful enough that anyone would ever kiss her. Nobody will find Madeline this or nobody will find Matt. What has here's, here's what I'm getting at. I see young kids that maniacally insert themselves into groups of people that they were not invited to because they're just reckless. They don't have any concept that they might not be valued or wanted. Mm -hmm. And then I look at, listen to you. You already have made me laugh. You're super articulate. You're able to identify what you're going through and cover it up. Like you're clearly brilliant. How do you get you. there, but you are missing the People don't want me around. Right. Where does that come from? I don't know. I okay. guess I, I've done some reflecting recently because I'm a huge fan of yours. I'm reading through your book currently. I'm almost finished with it. And cool. it's just, Thank you. I, it's phenomenal. Thank you. Um, but I've just kind of been soaking up, you know, your stuff like a sponge and just trying to apply that. And, I think reflecting back, like I had kind of an uneasy childhood as far as like, I, I have a phenomenal family, great support system. Um, but school age years, I struggled with weight. I still struggle with it a little bit. Um, but that's always kind of been a piece, I guess, in it. And I, I don't know. I it, had like, your, a friend group. Is your struggle with appearance something that's been noted on you or is that something that you bring to a group or bring to another person? Um, it's something I just kind of keep inward. I, I don't really like to reflect it outward, but mm -hmm. I guess um, maybe it does. Let, I, let me I'm say, not sure. Let me say it this way. I'll, I'll give you an example from my life, okay? Um, I dated somebody when I was in high school, somebody that I was madly, wildly in love with for all a 16 year old or 18 year old, I don't remember how old it was, could be in love, right? Uh -huh. I don't know what that meant, but I was. And I'll never forget one time we were hanging out and we were holding hands. And then she like, un she loosened up her hand and ran it up to the inside of my arm and was holding the inside of my arm. That, that meant we were like, you know, like we're really close to babies, right? I mean, like we're in love now, right? Right. right. And she looked up at me and said, 
You would be so cute. And remember back th- back when I was in school, cute meant smoking hot, right? Uh-huh. She was like, yes. you would be so cute if your teeth weren't so yellow. And so that was huh. years ago. That was a little bitty thing. To this day, I still smile with my mouth shut. Mm-hmm. I take pictures for a living, right? I'm being videoed right, right now and I smile with my right. mouth shut. And more importantly... I'm very awkward in person. And my wife pointed this out to me a few times over our, our years together. Uh-huh. Um, she said, I'll walk into a situation and then I'll lean back. And I mumble because I keep my mouth closed all the time. But I talk so much that I just in this mumbling stream of jump. Here's the thing. All of that is my insecurity from a 16-year-old girlfriend. Mm-hmm. In reality, I got yellow teeth. They're not sparkly white like my friend Rachel, my friend George. Like they, they, <laughs> like they open their mouth and it's blinding, right? I don't have that. I'm, I'm not that. Right. Um, and I have taken my insecurity in that area and I just throw it like a cast net over everybody in my, in my vicinity. And so I bring my insecurity to other people. And what my wife has told me is it's unnerving because people see you, John. They see me and they think, that guy's cool. That guy does this. He's got a good job. He's like this. Why is he so weird around me? It must be me. Mm-hmm. And then they back up because they don't want to be the weird person. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it might not be you, the person who thinks that they don't look right or that they're not beautiful enough. And it might okay. be she acts super weird around me and I think she's pretty rad or she's hilarious or I think she's beautiful, but I feel weird around her. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's the difference between walking into a situation and saying, I'm freaking Madeline from Missouri. <laughs> I deserve to be in every space I walk into. And if you don't want to be in that space with my big smile and my whatever I look like, then you are free to go. And that's on you, not on me. And that's a completely different composite than I have a crush on you and I want to date you, but I know that I'm not as pretty as I think I could be for you. And so I'm just going to try to get really small. See Mm -hmm. how different that is? Right. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I, I, you, you've just articulated, I think a lot of emotions and like a little hamster wheel of thoughts in my, in my mind. So the best way out of off the hamster wheel is not more thinking, it's doing. Right. And that's the worst. <laughs> that's, yes. the, that's the worst. <laughs> yes. Right? So uh, I'll tell you the, I'll tell you this story and then we can we can try to come up with a solution or a couple of solutions. Okay. We we can't solve it. I, I it would be it would be dishonest and disingenuous of me to be like, all right, here's how you date in the twenty first century. I don't know. Right. Here's what I do know. <laughs> um, a buddy of mine got divorced uh, a few years ago. And we were out to lunch and I was kind of living vicariously through him. I was like, all right, dude, you're dating again. Like, what's it like? And mm-hmm. I'll never forget. We were like in some burger joint in Texas and he takes, sets his food down and he wipes his, wipes his mouth off and he leaned in across the table and he said, I don't care how bad it gets at your house, man. Never, 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 never break up. You got to stay together, man. Yeah. This is crazy <laughs> out here. And I was like, what do you right? mean? He goes, it's insane. Everybody's nuts. And he went on to explain, like, remember when you would meet somebody like at church or at, at, a, at a bar or something and you'd say hi and get their number? Now they call the police if you do that. He goes, exactly. it's, <laughs> it's stalking. You can't do that. You have to follow them on the internets for a while. And anyway, he just is like a whole new planet opened up. So my first thought is to date in the 21st century, you should probably take an online programming class. Maybe that would help, like, interact with right. the internets. I don't know. Um, here's, here's a more truthful answer. I think you need to practice being around people and catching yourself when you start to feel awkward or not a part of the group. Okay. And when you feel yourself begin to lean back, when you feel yourself, I laugh too loud, I don't look good in this shirt, begin to really challenge those thoughts. Is this true? Okay. Could you stand to lose weight? Probably, possibly. Right. I I could, right? Is that the reason nobody loves you? No, it's not. Is that the reason why you're single? No, it's not. Okay. Okay. There's something behind that. That means you're going to have to spend a season being weird and uncomfortable, which is probably the two things you spent your life avoiding. 
mm-hmm. being the weird one and the uncomfortable one. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. Expect rejection, expect failure, expect crash and burns, expect to lean in and kiss somebody and then be like, what are you doing? Or expect somebody <laughs> to lean and kiss you and their breath is so bad your eyebrows fall out. Expect all those things. <laughs> Misreading signals, all of that. Okay. You've never done it, so you got to be graceful with yourself. And there are few people on the planet who have made more dating mistakes than I have. I was the worst at it. I was the most clueless moron. I just didn't see <laughs> – I just didn't – and I just kept getting back up and going again, mostly because okay. I was too stupid to know any different. <laughs> to know any different. <laughs> so when I say ask folks out, have a regularly a regular weekly gathering at your house with a couple of strangers or people from work or people from your local church or people from the Y. I don't care. Tell me what that does in your body. So I'm actually the the friend of the friend group that loves hosting. I'm the one that craves the connection and wants to cultivate that and have people over and host and do the things. Okay. But, um, I guess maybe I do it in a safe manner. I do it with the people that I've known the longest and that I'm closest to, but, um, are you going to date any of them? No. (laughs) So that's, here's what that's like. That's like you, um, Going to a pond on your granddad's farm and uh, because I just assume everybody in Missouri has a farm and you know there's no fish in there, but that is the Mm -hmm. pond that makes you the most comfortable. And then you just cast your line in there and sit all day and you're like, I'm terrible Mm -hmm. at fishing. Fish don't like me. That's not true. You just know that that's your that's your ride or die group. That's not your romance group. Right. Is that fair? Yes. So you got to be weird. Okay, where do we go to meet the people? <laughs> go, go first. Bring them to you. Bring them to you. Invite five or six people from work over. And and this is going to sound ridiculous, but what we're doing is we're practicing being awkward. Okay. We're practicing not overdoing it when it comes to I'm trying to to alter my appearance so that I can feel like I am fill in the blank. We're just going to be you. You're going to practice not cleaning up your house and making it look like it's an HGTV reveal every time somebody <laughs> walks over to your house. You're going to practice feeling comfortable and loved in your own skin. Okay. Is that fair? Yes, that's very fair. You called me out on the HGTV. <laughs> <laughs> but all, all that all that is, that's just make up for your home. That's an extra large shirt to cover up your body for your home. That is saying no to something that you really want to go to because you just feel like you're not having a a pretty day. Mm -hmm. And then blaming them for not calling you again after they've been rejected a few times by you. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? That's 100% fair. And, 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 because I can hear the people on the internet screaming too. (laughs) you may have to address your health. And yes, that is, that has always been a priority and just a a constant challenge for multiple issues, but that's something that's a priority for me. Make that priority because you're worth a life where your knees don't hurt and your back doesn't hurt and you don't have headaches all the time. Not to get somebody to sleep with you. You see the direction, the difference there? Mm -hmm. One is maniacal and pathological and chasing a moving target that you can never catch. One is looking in the mirror and smiling. Mm -hmm. You see the difference? Yes. Let's be healthy. Let's take care of ourselves. Let's be a good steward of our bodies because Madeline's worth a really fun, awesome life. Not because she wants to hook up with Dan. Dan's the worst, Madeline. You don't want to date that guy anyway. <laughs> Is that fair? Yes, it's fair. Okay. Become the best version of you you can be. And okay. just go be weird. <laughs> go be weird. Okay. okay Perfect. Will, listen, will you um, commit to, to going out, go being weird for the next 30, 45 days, inviting people over? setting up a thing. I'm going to send you all of the questions for humans cards. I got. Oh okay? my gosh. Thank you so and much. I'll, I'll, the kids packs, the adults pack. I'll send them all. Okay. Perfect. And I want you to use them 
uh, invite people over and say, hey, we're going to play these games. And if those games are lame, do do another game. Just come over and play okay. games. Or we're going to play Truth or Dare. We're going to play kid games. Whatever the thing is. Um, let's invite people over. And there's going to be people like, this sucks. You're weird. <laughs> and there's going to be three or four people that are like, dude, that was the most fun I've had in a long time. And they're going to cut there. That's you're going to find your ride or dies and they're going to bring a friend next time they come. And then they're going to bring somebody else. And then suddenly you're going to look across the room and be like, there it is. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But that's from the inside out, not the outside in. Okay. And if we come to Kansas, will you come to the show? Um, a hundred percent. I'm there. Oh my gosh. That's going to be incredible. Dude, it's going to be a disco Madeline. I can't even wait. It's not on the calendar, but I can't even wait. <laughs> hey, Thank you for being brave, Madeline. I'm grateful for you.